Hey Club 56ers, today is Father's Day. Whether you are gonna celebrate your dad, stepdad, granddad, uncle, whoever it is in your life that is actively being a role of a father to you, make sure to tell them that you love them and you appreciate them. And before we hop into today's lesson, I have a few funny special Father's Day videos and just funny videos in general that I can't wait for you to watch. Thanks for cooking, Mom. You're welcome. Wait, what are you doing? I'm making sticks. Mom, it's a non-stick pan. Oh, shoot, move. Don't tell dad. Ah, <laughs> uh, dad? There's water coming out of the bathroom, like a lot. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the volume inside of this bus is astronomical. You're gonna go to me, Julian. Make sure you put King on front of it. My word. My way, Maurice! Go away! My way. My way to the highway. My way. My mom said she didn't like my report card, and I said, okay. And she said, I need more A's, and I said, okay. <laughs> the name of the game, don't laugh. What do you call someone with no body and no nose? <laughs> Nobody knows. What time did the man go to the dentist? Tooth hurdy. <laughs> What's Forrest Gump's password? One Forrest, one. What rhymes with boo and stinks? You. What did the drummer name his twin daughters? Anna one, Anna two. <laughs> what do you call a guy with a rubber toe? Roberto. Lemon <laughs> and that cup. This lemon, I can move it into that cup. Okay. Without moving anything. Without touching it. Without touching it. And anything. I don't have to touch it either. Nope. Okay. How'd you do that? I'll try to move it over there. Wow. That last one reminds me so much of my own dad, it's crazy. For those of you who do not know, my dad is Pastor Eddie. He is the pastor of City Point to you, but to me, he's my dad. And no matter what happens in my life, I know my dad supports me, loves me, and encourages me. And for me, my dad is a good representation of God's love, but he is only a tiny example of the everlasting and relentless love we have from God. Today, I wanna talk about a story from the Bible. If you have your Bibles with you, you open them up to Luke 15, 11 through 32. This parable is called the prodigal son. With a group of followers gathered around him, Jesus tells the parable of the prodigal son. It is about the younger son of a successful farmer who begs his father for his inheritance so he can go into the city and have the time of his life. The older brother insists that the younger brother stay and do his part of the hard work on the farm. But the father finally relents and bids a sad goodbye to his younger son. In the city, he sees temptations on every corner and he wastes his money on every opportunity. Within a short time, he has spent all of his inheritance money. And now that the young son is poor, he then has to beg on the streets. Soon a famine swept the city, so the young son leaves the city and is wandering around the countryside, where he eventually finds a farmer that allows him to take care of his animals. Reaching a new low, he eats with the hogs in order to survive. And have you all ever seen what a hog eats? <laughs> My dad refers to them as nature's vacuum. They eat anything and everything, and sometimes their food is kind of smelly. And in total despair, he decides to return home and beg his father to hire him as a servant. Now, with your Bibles, let's read Luke 15, 20 through 24, which says, So he returned home to his father, and while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both you and heaven, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. But his father said to the servants, Quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet, and kill the calf we 
have been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast, for this son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party began. In front of his father's house, he falls to the ground begging for forgiveness. His father, so delighted to see him, throws a celebration in his honor. The older brother, who has done all the work since he has left, is angry and feels like he's been slighted. But his father explains that he would have done the same for him. In Luke 15, 30 through 31, we see that his father said to him, Look, dear son, you have always stayed by me and everything I have is yours. We have to celebrate this happy day for your brother was dead and has come back to life. He was lost, but now he is found. The son had to go through so much to gain wisdom, but now he is found. Then the older brother and his father go together to celebrate the younger brother's return. This parable is a small representation of God's love for us, and he used the father in this story to show us how. God is so proud of you, and he wants the best for you, and that's why he sent Jesus to die in our place. There are so many ways we can see small glimpses of God's love for us. One of those ways we can see a glimpse of God's love for us is through our parents. Since today is Father's Day, I asked a few of the dads from City Point what being a father has taught them about love. Let's check it out. Yeah, I definitely think that being a dad um, has changed my uh, my view of what love actually is. Uh, my name is Chris. I'm the father of two daughters, Aurora and Sophia. Um, I learned that love is very sacrificial. Um, always and you kind of have to put yourself to the wayside for somebody else and then also too um, as a dad um, I've learned that the father um, he knows more than I do a lot of times my kids like to run around the edge of the bed and they don't think about I can fall or I can get hurt uh, they haven't had a one-on-one -on -one crash course with gravity yet um, so I have to be there to catch them and guide them and help them. And I feel like the Lord is very much the same way. Uh, sometimes we don't know uh, what we're doing. And the, the Lord is kind enough and gracious enough to, to be there for us, uh, to help us to not fall. And if we do, to be there to pick us up. Hey Club 56ers, my name is Steven and I've got two boys. Their names are Emery and Levi. And something I really began to understand whenever I had children of my own is that there's nothing they can do, you know, to make me love them any less. Sometimes my kids get in trouble, they disobey, they get into fights with one another and they argue, but during all those times, I love them so much. And that's how God feels about us too. He loves us so much. In Romans 5:8, it tells us that while we were yet sinners, God demonstrated his love for us through Christ. You know, he sent his only son to die for us, even whenever we were making mistakes, even when we were sinners. That's how much God loves us. And I can see that in my own life now that I'm a dad, that even when my kids are acting a little bit like punks, I still love them. They're still mine, and there's nothing I wouldn't do for them. There's nothing they could do that would make me love them any less. God loves us just the same, but more. Hey, uh, my name is Pastor Eddie. And uh, I want to share just a couple things with you real quick. I have three kids, Madison, Allison, and Hudson. And since becoming a father, it's taught me a lot of things, um, really about who God the Father is, that He is patient with us, that even when we fall, come short, even when we mess up, um, He's standing by our side to help us all the way through. I'll never give up on one of my kids, and I'll never stop loving one of them for any reason. So I know if that's my commitment as a dad, um, I know God's commitment is even much higher. So that's the lesson I've learned by being a father along with many more. Um, but my kids have taught me how God loves me so much and how he's so patient with me. Those are all inspiring and cool stories. No matter if your father figure in your life is your dad, uncle, grandfather, family friend, or even a stepdad, God made sure he put them in your life so that you can feel the love of the Father and know that he is rooting for you. And God loves you so much. Before we end today's video, you know that Pastor Eddie had to get a heart transplant. Well, he was finally able to come home. How awesome is that, that we get to witness a miracle? Please continue to pray for healing over his body 
strength to keep going, and peace over his family. And don't forget, each week you can check out citypointchurch.com slash club56 to find your weekly scripture, devotional, new lesson, and games and experience for you and your family to try out that week. Before we go, if you have any ideas on what you'd like to see in a Club 56 video, or if you'd like to be in a Club 56 video, have you or your parents email mwoods at citypointchurch.com to get more information on how to do that. That's all I have for you today. I love you guys. I hope you feel encouraged to take your next step in your walk with Christ. I'll see you guys all next week. Bye.